How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Here I am furiously trying to resubscribe to my own Twitch. I'll get it figured out here in a moment. I'll be using my Amazon Prime account to get a free Twitch. Did you know you can do that? Indeed, you can. If you have Amazon Prime, you can subscribe to our Twitch channel for free. You get a free Twitch subscription with your Amazon Prime account. I use mine every month for my own site. That's the kind of guy I am. Hey, it's Friday here on the show. we got a lot to talk about here today because there's always a lot to talk about on Fridays, isn't there? So a lot to get into, including the ratings for the Dynamite show on Wednesday. Dynamite saw the ravages of Hurricane Ian as it uh, ended up 999,000 viewers. And uh, if you look at the cable charts, I mean, the Weather Channel was all over the place. So uh, it's also, there's more we could talk about, but I don't think that power outages necessarily directly affected the last half hour of the show. But we did get a uh, word from a lot of people who lost their power right around 930. And 930 is, uh, I guess it was 1030. 1030 is when they, they lost a lot of viewership. So there was a lot going on Wednesday night. I don't think it's anything to panic about, but... Because it was under 1 million, you know how it went on my timeline. So we'll talk about that here today. Next week's show is going to have an extended runtime. We'll tell you about that. Roosh! Bandito! Contract notes on the two of them. Dr. Chris Amon, no longer with WWE. And in fact, there is a Vice TV documentary on Vince McMahon, which will be coming out sometime in October. And both myself and Dave Meltzer are involved in that documentary. We were interviewed for it, so I can tell you a little bit about that. And uh, and some notes on NXT 2.0 as well. So a lot to get into here today. You can send us a text message, 425-780-7566, brian at wrestlingobserver.com, at Brian Alvarez on Twitter. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. If you head to my Twitter right now, no, this is not a plug for super followers. But if you go to my Twitter right now, I have retweeted a link to a GoFundMe. And uh, essentially what happened is the uh, one of the main audio guys for AEW was at Dynamite this week. And I believe that his mother was staying at his house. And uh, as a result of Hurricane Ian, there was like an explosion and uh, the house burned down. So there's a GoFundMe up right now uh, for him. And I believe Tony Khan and Chris Jericho have already donated, I think, $10,000 each. It's up to $40,000 already. So if you have uh, any spare change and would like to uh, donate to a good cause... Uh, that just came across here today. So uh, best wishes to him and his family. It was uh, not good, this whole Hurricane Ian. So uh, there you go. That's up there right now. So uh, news today. We got a lot of it. The uh, hurricane also affected ratings, although uh, that's the least of the issues with the hurricane. But... Dynamite, 990,000 viewers on TBS, down 4.7%. First time the show has been below a million since August 17th. Uh, 0.34 and 18 to 49. And of course, if you look at the cable charts, Weather Channel, Weather Channel, Weather Channel, Weather Channel, Weather Channel. Top seven spots in 18 to 49. So uh, if you exclude the Weather Channel, uh, Dynamite would be second to Tucker Carlson Fox News, which I would suspect was also talking about the hurricane so uh i would not read too much into these numbers obviously don't go on my timeline numbers fine uh what happened was the show started it was not like the last few weeks where it's been like a razor straight line throughout the show it started big 1.2 million and uh just began to decline and for about an hour from 9 30 to 10 30 it was uh right around a million and then uh 9 30 or 10 30 to 11 30 it uh, lost several hundred thousand viewers, and uh, I don't think that it's, uh, you know, a hundred thousand people were all in South Florida and lost power, but I, I did hear from several people that were there, 
and they all said we lost power right after the uh, the women's segment, which is in fact where there was a steep decline. So I think that would have been a small part of it, but I don't think that's that's the entire deal. But those are your dynamite numbers, and uh, nothing to worry about. Let's not all freak out, right? No, no, the I'm sky not. is obviously falling. It is. Uh, I think they we agree. The sky is not falling, sure. Mike. Don't, oh. don't scare people. Uh. Next Wednesday's dynamite, Mike. Mm-hmm. They will have an extended runtime. Oh yeah. Tony Khan announced today the October 5th edition will be 15 minutes longer than usual. It is the show's the Dynamite three-year anniversary episode. It will air till 10.15 p.m. Tony Khan said to celebrate three years, the Dynamite anniversary show has 15 minutes extra runtime. Two hours and 15 minutes total. Bet all the belts live next Friday after a live rampage. I still haven't figured that one out. Thank you, WBD, for the anniversary next week. We've got Brian Danielson and Daniel Garcia versus Jericho and Sammy Guevara. MJF versus Wheeler Yuta. Luchasaurus will be in action. That damn dinosaur. Darby Allen versus Jay Lethal. And National Scissoring Day with the acclaimed and Billy Gunn. Well, that's obviously why they need the extra 15 minutes for the scissoring segment. I don't know how long that's going to need. Well, you may need it to be a little bit after 10 p.m. because you never know what could happen during a scissoring segment. It could get a little wild. Well, actually, I do know what could happen. Oh, yeah? I don't know You've if it's been a part be of a some scissoring full situations scissoring, in the past. Uh, session here. So, uh, also, Hurricane Ian affected NXT as, uh, you know, there were several people down there as part of NXT that lost power, just now getting power restored. The power is being restored to the Performance Center today. And NXT will be live again next Tuesday, two weeks of taped shows. And as I had figured, one of the reasons they did two weeks of taped shows was uh, kind of redoing the set because the old NXT 2.0 is gone. There is a new NXT 3.0, but they're not calling it that. They're going back to the gold. It's gold and white this time. And they are redoing the set, okay? But I have been told it is not. Although when you think about it, I don't even know what this means. We're going to find out Tuesday. It's not as drastic as the change to 2.0. I don't think it could be. If you guys saw the changeover from NXT to NXT 2.0, you probably couldn't have a more drastic change. I guess if you would have put the ring like on the ceiling and everybody had to like wrestle upside down. But I mean, other than that, the colors and the, you know, I talked to my buddy, um, I think it was Mark. I'm not sure who it was. But one of my buddies, they they uh, watched NXT 2.0 for the first time, and uh, they said there are CGI humans. <laughs> I was like, "What?" And I never noticed before because, like, I don't care that much. But they 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 have giant video walls with fake people. <laughs> like, that's a pretty big addition. You know what I'm saying? Fake people. So anyway, I don't know what it's gonna look like. But they did do a, a remodel, a remake over whatever. It's going to be different, but it's not going to be, like, I'm told, massively, drastically different. But we will see a change. Well, thank God Mandy Rose is still there. Because nothing streams NXT than, more than Mandy Rose. Well, Mandy uh, Rose and Alba Fire. Can, are you ready? Are you ready for this, Brian? You know, you know she, comes, she comes from a family of fire walkers or throwers or... Something. It's a fire something. It's not a fire yeah. walker. Mm. It's 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 the keepers of the flame, I think is mm. the way it was described. Which is like, listen, Alba Fire is a great talent. This gimmick is just it's ridiculous. She she her name is Alba Fire and like she she walks around with a torch. They did it. We didn't even talk about this. They did two angles on uh on NXT this week, okay? One of them she was in the parking lot, and uh, and it was funny because, like, Toxic Attraction's cutting a promo, and they cut to Alba, and she goes, I'm not in a words, I'm in action. <laughs> and she actually, she literally said, I'm not into words, I'm in actions. And then she throws down her torch as a keeper of the flame, and words, yeah. and words appear in flame, and knew it says. And I was like, I thought you weren't into words. 
I mean, it seems like you're really into words because you lit words on fire right here as a as a threat. So that was the first one. That was goofy. And a hashtag at that. I didn't even notice the hashtag. Yeah. Wow. It was a hashtag Ian knew. Okay. Well, then, then later in the show, this was my favorite. So they did some segment, and, and Toxic Attraction is out there, and then whoever the random baby faces are, it's like, uh, you know, it, it doesn't matter. But they're all they're kind of yelling at each other. Like, there's there's the one on this side and the one on this side. And they're yelling at each other. And all of a sudden, Alba Fire appears out of nowhere with her torch, and she goes, ba-bam! And this giant freaking wall of flame shoots between everybody. And even the baby faces almost get burned. And they're like, ah! And I was like, what? What? You're an arsonist? I don't get it. This is not my favorite uh, storyline. Oh, Alba my God. Fire. Oh, my God. I just thought about it. 15 extra minutes, 15 minutes that can be dedicated to Pretty Deadly. Oh, my God. Wrong show, geek. Oh, man. Dynamite is 15 minutes extra. Damn it. I need NXT to be 15 minutes extra. I've missed a few Fridays lately. It's a good thing I didn't miss this one. Mm. You're you're not on your game. You're really pulling a Soraya tonight. tonight. I'm doing. ready for it to be the weekend, to be honest with you. And I'm thinking about 15 minutes extra with Pretty Deadly. Of course, I'm also thinking if they did give NXT 15 extra minutes, well, it would be Toxic Attraction or somebody like that who would get that spot instead, and that would make me very unhappy. Roosh is now under a full-time deal with AEW. And yes, Bandito, after Wednesday, was immediately offered a full-time contract. Is that when Tony jumped into his arms? Dude, I'd have jumped into his arms after that match. It was incredible. And, uh... I don't know. I if just he's... worry about him backflipping off the stage with me. Now it just says here that he was offered a deal. I hope, hopefully, you signed. Because I, I mean, WWE was asking for his number, like before that match was even over. The man is in demand, which begs the question: like, why was he not in demand before Wednesday? I don't think we needed Wednesday to find out that Bandito was great. Anyway, back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. You know, Mike, a couple of yeah. uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was unavailable for this show, and you took over. Mm-hmm. Got nothing but bad reviews. But anyway, I was, uh, I was, uh, mm-hmm. I was actually being interviewed for this Vice TV documentary on Vince McMahon. Oh, yeah. Yes, I can admit it now. That's actually what I was doing. Documentary on Vince McMahon said to be released next month. Vice TV currently working on the project. According to a report from PW Insider, I love when they break my news. It will air sometime in October. Huh. Documentary will focus on McMahon's career as well as the hush money scandal broken by the Wall Street Journal that led to his resignation from WWE. Our own Dave Meltzer was interviewed for the film, the front page says. Yeah. And also me. Oh, yeah? Front page. Really? Yes. HBO Real Sports said to be working on the segment, on a segment focusing on uh, Vince McMahon. There's a lot of other ones as well. But, uh, I mean, it's possible I sucked and I won't be on it, but they did interview me for about two and a half hours. And I got to talk about uh, my favorite subject, the departure of Vince McMahon. Not you? That's what I thought your favorite subject was. The departure of me? No, just you in general. No, I don't you like, talking about you. I don't like talking about myself, Mike. You know that. Yeah, no, of course not. Yes. You know who also was interviewed for that? The Wrestling News' is Brian Solomon. You know who Brian really? Solomon is, don't you? I think I recommended him. Yes. Yeah, so for... <laughs> Former WWE magazine writer and fine man who wrote a fine book with the, uh, the Sheik book, which if you're a, a fan of wrestling books at all, there's been a couple that have come out. Obviously, the Brian Gwertz book. Uh, everybody's talked about that one. That's uh, pretty incredible. But if you like history, that Sheik book is really something else about a guy that really talked about keeping kayfabe alive until the end. Uh, the Sheik definitely tried to do that. Well, you know what I'll do is I might have some uh, behind-the-scenes photos here that maybe I can uh, tweet out to my super followers. Huh, how about that? Later on today. Brian mm. Alvarez on Twitter, at Brian Alvarez. Hey, you know what date is, Brian? Uh, what's today? I My birthday? Believe it's, I believe it's National Podcast Day. No, is it really? I believe it is, and I'll I'm not saying that, that for cameos. 
anything the exactly nothing to do with this but everything to do with the fact that you're out there pimping your cameos you haven't done that in a while since you've been after all these super followers what if you're a super follower who wants a cameo well, I mean, to be fair, I don't know how any of this works. I can't offer discounts or anything like that. But they're very cheap. Some and I, I don't deal. feel I need to promote it as much, given my 185 five-star ratings that I've got. Let's see, the Big Boss Man bundle deal. How do we get all of the social media at once from you? I don't know. It just was weird how I just went. I just, it came out of me like DDP. Yeah. All right, we got some uh, we got some questions here. A lot flows out of you. 425-780-7566. Text me. And you know what? Because it's Friday. I'm going to open up the phone lines in the next segment because I like to have a good time. I'm like Michelle <laughs> McCool. Remember when you were going to make it Hawaiian shirt day? Yeah, let's see. This person, Mike, this mm -hmm. person actually says, hey, Brian, hey, Mike. Yeah. I'm a big Dalton Castle fan. I was wondering if there's any reason why we haven't seen more of him in AEW since the initial shutdown of Ring of Honor. Is there a concern that his gimmick would not trans... Well, it's not that concern. Possibly too... Not that. Is there some backstage... No. Listen, you know, there's a lot of guys that are in contract to Ring of Honor that we haven't seen a lot on AEW television. We have seen him a few times. But I think he's an exclusive Ring of Honor... You know, exclusive. It's all the same. But, you know, I think that he's largely going to be a Ring of Honor talent. And if they have a battle royal or whatever and they need him and the boys, they'll they'll use him. But... I mean, I I am a gigantic fan of Dalton Castle. I think he's awesome. If you go into the uh, archives, years ago he was on this show a few times, and uh, he's always Dalton Castle. He's always Dalton Castle. Yeah. And uh, I love his work, and I I wish he was showcased more. But there's no there's no conspiracy and or issue. It's just they got a lot of talent, dude. They got a lot of talent exclusive to AEW. They're not doing anything with. So I wouldn't read too much into it. There, for a lot of different reasons, Ring of Honor could not get out of its own way. And some of it was self-inflicted. Some other parts of it were just bad luck. And Dalton Castle's back being as bad as it was at the time where he was champion and just what went on after that, it's too bad he didn't get a chance to be able to shine more. And hopefully in the future he can and Bandito's another one where that era is not a very good one. And again, a lot of it was self-inflicted from Ring of Honor, self-inflicted from Sinclair Broadcasting, not investing well enough in the company. But if you look at the people of color, if you look at Shane Taylor Promotions, if you look at Bandito and some of the other people that they made champions and that they pushed you know, out of out of necessity, partly out of necessity, because they needed to be different than everybody else in a field that was crowding them out. I, you know, people again, it's not like somebody's got to go back and do a deep dive right away on it. But there is some good stuff and they tried some good stuff. And if Bandito can finally catch on somewhere else other than Triple A, where his star can continue to shine, I mean, Boy, I would love to see him in New Japan, you know, after a performance like that, because he would fit in perfectly. This person here says, I find Jericho holding the Ring of Honor title hostage the best thing on Dynamite right now. Join the club, brother. Who ultimately should be the one to beat him? Well, here's the thing. Ultimately, ultimately, a rising young star needs to end up the Ring of Honor champion. Down the line. Now, in this instance, in this instance... I actually do not think that I would have Chris Jericho necessarily put over, for example, a Daniel Garcia for the title. And the reason for that is I believe that this storyline should end. And it's going to be hard because they're already doing the match, so I guess we'll have to figure out what they do. But I think this story should end with, like, Brian Danielson saving the honor of Ring of Honor in unseating Chris Jericho at, like, final battle, a big pay-per-view where you make a lot of money. Danielson could then be a guy to put over a Garcia or whoever, and uh, then that person could be could be elevated. But I really like the idea of... And, and the reason I say that is because the, actual, the whole Jericho story is dishonoring Ring of Honor and beating all of the former Ring of Honor champions, beating up the Kerry Silkins and the Bobby and everything like that. So this story, to me, doesn't end with just somebody that's never been a part of Ring of Honor unseating him. This ends with a former Ring of Honor champion 
bringing glory back to Ring of Honor. And Brian Danielson is the perfect guy. Now they've already announced a match. I don't think I can't imagine. I would be I would be hugely disappointed if Danielson just ends his Jericho thing in two weeks. This has got to go on for a while, and he's got to be beating some, you know, former Ring of Honor champion. Yeah, this person mentions Joe. You know, some some former Ring of Honor, not Loki, some former Ring of Honor star <laughs> needs to beat Jericho to bring uh, joy back to Ring of Honor, and then they can be unseated by a new star. That's my I thought. Kn- I know you can be a prone to a little hyperbole, but my God, the way you were filleting Chris Jericho in this I whole I knew ROH. you were going to bring something like that up, but Holy am I wrong? Moses. Was I wrong? Here's Did you watch thing. that show? You are not... Wholly incorrect because it is the best thing that ROH I'm not has incorrect done. at all. When it comes to ROH, it's the best thing that's been done in a while. The problem is because nothing's been done with ROH in a while, and I think it's very good. But look, unless this leads to TV, unless this leads to something that is going to be beneficial for ROH individually away from AEW. You know, nothing works yet. Okay, just, just. I'm sorry, nothing works. Well, what do you yet. want him to do? Just go like this and get a TV deal? I'm sure they're trying. But you're like, you're acting as if this is the greatest thing in the history of pro wrestling with Bro. Chris Jericho. He's revived Ring of Honor. No, he hasn't. He's just got the belt. Wow. That's all he go. does. Here we go. He's, he cuts better interviews than Claudio. I mean, you immediately took the belt off of Claudio, and I understand why. But it's not like that benefited Claudio greatly. It doesn't hurt him, but it didn't benefit him. And I think you do actually have to have somebody that can be touched by the history of Ring of Honor, whether it be Joe and Danielson or somebody, but it's got to be somebody new to pick up the torch. Doesn't necessarily have to be a new name per se, but it does have to be somebody new that can actually, you know, combine what's old about Ring of Honor with where it's going. To me, unless you do that, I, again, I, what, what do you me, do if you just pass the belt to Danielson? Why does Danielson have to be the savior of Ring of Honor? Why does that make any sense? That's the story. Jericho that's was your dishonor- story, bro. You're telling me is you're telling me you got Garcia, Captain Booker, you got here. you got Yuta. Part of this is about some new generation of guy or somebody that's uniquely Ring of Honor. Those guys aren't uniquely Ring of Honor anymore. They're not. You know, I'll have Matt Taven. I think he'd be a great guy to unseat Chris Jericho and, at the end look, of this feud. If it's Dalton Castle, bless the guy. if it's Matt Taven, if it's Jay Briscoe, if it's somebody that's more uniquely Ring of Honor that's not AEW, that's not just a guy on the AEW roster who was a Ring of Honor guy, and he's going to be the one who says, okay, Tony Khan's got this now. I'm your guy to take you to the future. I'm your guy to beat Jericho and get him out of the way and carry your brand. Then, yeah, to me, that makes more sense than Brian Danielson coming to save the day or Samoa Joe coming to save the day. I just don't think that's what it's going to need. But we'll see. Yeah, we will see. It's brilliant, isn't it? It's the best thing in pro wrestling. You know, it's Greatest thing to happen to Ring of Honor ever. Easy money, baby. Are you happy? I knew it was going to happen with Bobby Cruz. Are you happy? I knew it when Kerry Silkin got hit where they were going with this. We'll be back in a moment, everybody, with phone calls. Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Clearly, I made a big mistake a moment ago. Mm -hmm. If you want to, not on you. If you want to call, this is the phone number to call, 844-913-2727. 844-913-2727. If you're trying to call the text message line, you're wasting your time. Nobody answers. So once again, if you want to call, toll-free 844-913-2727. Text message is 425-780-7566. If you keep calling the text message line, I'm going to block you, and you're not going to be able to even text anymore. So stop calling the text message line. You know who's it's very not, difficult for some people. You know who's not in the Hall of Awesome, Mike? Who? You. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I don't want to be part of your Hall of Awesome. I don't. I'm not impressed by Good. that. It's not an honor to me. Good. What, because Vinny woke up actually during a segment and actually, you know, declare something great? No. 
Mm. I don't care. Oh, well, I'm not Vinny, trying to be Vinny, around Vinny any declared of that. a gray, too. Hmm. But I'm the, uh, mm. I'm the one who's, uh, yeah. Let's go to the phones. Brandon, you're on the air. My good friend, Brandon. What's going on? Meet your friend. Hey, what's up, Mike? What's are up, you my Brian? friend, Brandon? Hope you guys have See, a... what's up, Mike? Am what's up, what? Brandon? Are you my... See, thank you, brother. Are you my friend? Of course I am friend. your friend, yes. Yeah. Thank you. What's on your mind? Oh, you're welcome. Hey, um, I wanted to know, I'm like everybody, I am enjoying the Sami Zayn stuff with the uh, bloodline. And, um, you know, just wondering, like, how do you guys think specifically how things will play out. I mean, it looks like the obvious direction is, you know, obviously the, it was the, the blunt line turns on Sammy, but do you think maybe Sammy wises up first, turns on them, and, you know, I don't know I'm just excited with this whole segment, and there's a lot of things specifically they could do. Ultimately, I figure Sammy and Kevin do team up and the, the throne the Usos, but maybe they do something else. I don't know, but... Just well, want to get more of your thoughts on that. Yes, my friend Brandon, I want to thank you very much for the call. I think the the most obvious thing, and what I would do, and there's a lot of things I would do, is I would uh, have Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens beat the Usos for the tag team titles at WrestleMania. I think that's the that's the best. Uh, I mean, Sami is so over. Kevin Owens, we know the history. It's something for both of them to do. Everybody asks who's going to beat the Usos. They've beaten all of these tag teams. Sammy and Kevin, after the Usos turn on Sammy and Kevin makes the save and they go on a quest and they beat them for the tag team titles. You can do the rumble, whatever. I That's the direction I would go with all of this. I think that's, you know, and people going, maybe, uh, you know, if something doesn't work out with uh, The Rock, Sammy, can, Sammy ain't beating Roman Reigns. No. He's not, okay? <clears throat> but Sammy and Kevin can beat the Usos, and I think it would be fantastic. Absolutely. You know, and a long enough period of time has gone by since Kevin and Sammy have been reunited together. And I know Kevin always turns on Sammy, but you know what? Enough time has gone by. People forget about that. They want to see him together and Again, when who knows what's going to happen? In almost any way somebody wants to fantasy book this, it's probably going to be pretty good because of the people that are involved. But The Rock, if he's coming back to take back the bloodline or if he's got a beef with Roman, you know, there's a lot of ways you can try to put cracks into things and get Sammy out of that group, whether it's him doing something that screws up something with Solo Sokoa, which leads to a tag match with Solo and Jay against Jimmy and Sammy. Do you do a turn then? Is that how you go about doing it? So there's a lot of different ways you can fantasy book it, but the one that makes the most sense, the one that's the most obvious and the thing that's going to get the best reaction is Sammy and, and Kevin getting back together again and being the ones to finally put down the Usos after whatever they're at right now, 500 plus days as champions. Let's go to my main man, my friend, Dagan. You're on the air. What's up, Dagan? What's going on, guys? What's up, Twitch homies? It's been a little while. Brian, I think you're just avoiding me because you know that I'm. Uh, you're going to owe me a year subscription to your super followers after uh, MGF gets cheered in a non New York building. But uh, that's besides the point. I, I was calling oh, in today brother. to get your thoughts on. AEW, you know, I, it's interesting. I called a year ago, I think, just about, and AEW was at a point then when ticket sales were through the roof. They were selling out Arthur Ashe Stadium, and I asked you, Brian, about what you think AEW should do to keep up with this demand. Well, a year later, now they're struggling to sell tickets. There's some of these shows like this Atlantic City Rampage coming up where they barely sold 1,000 tickets in a 10,000-seat venue so i i wanted to kind of switch that question up now a year later and ask you what do you think aw should do to start moving tickets a wait they sold more? a thousand do do? tickets wait wait a thousand tickets in a ten thousand seat venue well hold on yeah i'm going to these yeah, russell the, ticks numbers right now give me a second here and i'll let you know for sure exactly what they are but there are a couple of shows that have been very 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 slow well, that's uh, so, slow, but I'm talking like the final number is not 1,000 and 10,000. No, and no. obviously not the final number right. yet, no. They would have already canceled by that yeah, the, point in all likelihood. Well, here's, The Boardwalk City Hall Rampage coming up on November 5th. They've sold uh, only about 1,000 tickets so far for 10,000. Okay, but well, anyway, thanks for taking my call, guys. Yeah, I mean, listen, obviously, you know... There, there's, uh, there's a million things that are going on that could be happening. One thing is, I mean, in general, unless you're on a hot streak... 
I mean, you're not going to draw as well the second time as you draw the first time, especially if you're going regularly. Um, but the best example for me locally is I love Defy shows, and I don't go to every Defy show. And, you know, part of it is, you know, scheduling and everything like that. But they run all the time. And it's not even so much that they run all the time, but I also know that if they run all the time and I miss it, I can go the next month. And, you know, Chicago market in particular, it's like, dude, they run Chicago a lot. And, you know, that's one of the uh, it's one of the things about WWE. WWE is on a hot streak right now, so they're doing well everywhere. But, you know, even when they're not on a hot streak, you know, they'll still do, you know, fine because, you know, especially around here, it's like, how often do I get a WWE show? We had a SmackDown taping. I have no idea when they're coming back. No clue. So if I'm a fan even a little bit of WWE, if they're coming to town, like, I got to go. Otherwise, I don't even know when they're coming back. If I lived in Chicago and an AEW is running a show and maybe I got something that night, it's like, eh, they'll be back in a month, two months or whatever. So there's that aspect. And then, you know, there's also the aspect of it not being as hot as it was for, for live crowds. It's not, it's not new. And, you know, that's the way things go with attendance. Everyone's going to have ups and downs. WWE is up right now and, and AEW is is not up so it's not neither one is a really hot touring product right now and the numbers exactly that it were last audited 19 hours ago tickets distributed for atlantic city this is for the boardwalk hall on november 4th the rampage 1022 tickets distributed available tickets 3709 so we still got what about six weeks plus before that show is going to take place it's funny in some pockets it seems to be wwe has canceled five out of six sunday sizzler shows or whatever they call their sunday show in places like grand grand prairie alberta and there was one in oregon and a couple of them that they've they've seemingly canceled and they seemingly sell tickets i guess about you know a thousand two thousand but it gets to a point where if they're not selling any in the last couple of weeks at all they've canceled those shows outright so you know, and I know there's a slow, a very slow uh, SmackDown, I think, that's going to be taping. And I think that's in Arizona that's going to be coming up where the ticket sales seem to be slow for right now. So a lot of this has got to do not only with the fact that they're not hot, but the fact that there's a crunch in the economy right now. And some of these towns, some especially ones, Oklahoma City, I think, is actually where it is that's slow. They've been there a couple of times and they haven't cracked 5,000. Apparently they're having trouble getting four right now. So once you go to a place too often and the fact that, you know, money is tight right now. It's going to be probably a rough road here going into the new year. All right. Let's go to the phones. You're on the air. What's going on? Hi, Brian. This is JB, a super friend. And uh, in the next year, we're going to need to up our prediction game. Uh, after this year, we've oh. had, we need a much bolder prediction. God. And one that was handed to me was uh, that Tony running a private company hires Vince McMahon and reprises the Mr. McMahon character and puts him on the dark program. Well, listen, I want to thank you very much for the call. And do you notice he called himself a super friend and not a super follower? But uh, I would say that it's very, very unlikely because Vince McMahon is uh, persona non grata. And I don't, see, uh, I don't see Tony going after somebody that just had a scandal like that. Plus, I don't know. I don't know what Vince is doing right now. He wouldn't. Are you kidding me? You think Vince McMahon would do that? Are you out of your mind? Are you nuts? I did, hold you on think a second. he'd truly I inject didn't say the he'd poison? Do it, but oh you know, you know what? I don't know. No, I don't know I'm, what he'd do. I don't he know. He would absolutely not do that. No Dude, way. What's he doing right now? His hobbies? What hobbies? He, he has no hobby. What's he, he going is to the not gym? Go, Eighteen is, hours a day. Are you kidding? I don't know what he's, he's going to do, but you know what he's doing now? The thing Nothing. he is most proud of? He's probably bored out of his mind. The reflection of himself, the company that to this day may or may not have possibly allegedly tampered with people under contract, even under a new regime. No way. No way. That line may be in Wait, winter. who are you talking about? If Tony Vince would do McMahon? it or if Vince would do it? Vince McMahon appearing on a Tony Con? No way. Eh, Nothing that's not WWE do. Vince McMahon will ever appear on. Maybe, Stop that. You know what? Maybe, maybe he thinks that Stephanie and Triple H threw him under the bus. 
and so now he's out for revenge. I don't know. I don't know what this guy thinks. Let me tell you something. Brother, if, if I knew what Vince McMahon thought, I'd have had a lot easier time the last four years. If that's the case, if he thought that Triple H and Stephanie did something like that, the way you made it sound, that was going to be some sort of vigilante movie. We need Vince to be in some sort of documentary, some sort of his of his own series, focusing on him going after them. No way does he ever put one dime in the pocket of Tony Khan. Mm. No way. Mm. It's not in his nature. I mean, it's not, not in his happen. nature as a promoter. It's not going to no. happen. But you know what's not impossible? Anything. Actually, there's a lot of things that are impossible, but this one isn't. If something's possible, if something is possible, Mike, it's not impossible. And you should know that from following all of the news in 2022, because nobody's winning this prediction contest. And you know what? You could have all won, because it was nothing, nothing but crazy things that happened this year. One insane thing after another happened in 2022. So I don't know. Yeah, that uh, you know a good you know what I'm gonna do for the Granny Show this coming week. I got a great contest. Set. What's Vince McMahon doing right now? <laughs> Who's got the best answer? Something illegal. Maybe I mean, something listen, legal. Listen, a secretary. Okay, I don't have much in common with Vince. Okay, but one thing I do have in common is blondes. I essentially do two things. I work all the time, and I hang out with my wife and children. <laughs> what? Wait a second. What Time else out. do I do? Oh, I Time guess out. I go Time to jujitsu. But... You're saying that's what makes you like Vince McMahon? No. Can I continue? Okay. What hobbies do I have? Do I go to the movies? Do no. I paint? Do I no. play pickleball? No. Like, if all of a sudden I was no longer doing this job, if if tomorrow, like, uh, podcasting became illegal, whatever, what am I going to do? <laughs> what am I going to do? What in God's name would I do if all of a sudden I didn't have to wake up and do this job? I lost your whole identity. So You'd have I to can go find a new one. So when I think about Vince McMahon, that's a great question. What's this guy doing right now? Reading. Reading. Playing Jenga. Oh, he's reading. Oh, he's playing. Yeah, I bet he's doing that. I bet he's on the New York Times doing Wordle. A little antiquing. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Oh my God. You all right? Dude, it took me an hour to figure out how to resubscribe with Prime. You want to know why? Because I didn't just look at the box that said, use Prime with a check mark. <laughs> I was busy. I'm a busy guy. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of work here. A lot of excuse making. No, there's no excuse making. I do a yeah. lot of work here. Yeah. And if I didn't have this job, I'd just be making videos for my super followers or something. But I can't oh do that God. all day. No. Because then you wouldn't have any super followers because people wouldn't want to care about you. Incorrect. They wouldn't know who you are. Jingo here was my uh, the bane of my existence, but now he's my friend. Oh, yeah? Through super following. Because he found out. As soon as out, somebody gives you money. He found, no, he found out. He found out that it was a great value and that it was worth it. And if anybody would tell you the truth about whether it's worth it or not, it would be my arch rival, Jingu. Wow. But he liked it. So, so now you have what a does kinship. that tell you? Uh. We do have a kin, kin, a kinship, yes, yes. Because you know, if you're if you're willing to pay to super follow me, then I know that if I disagree with you, you're actually you're acting in good faith and you're not a troll. There's a big difference. Because somebody's trolls paying you? are cheap. Somebody's paying you to give a different opinion. You not now me to give validate it not, more not, because you you've been gilded by them. No, because it, because a troll who 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 brings nothing to the table is just merely a troll. They're trying to push your buttons. Mm. But uh, some sort of instigator, say Brian. If you ever need a hobby, fishing is fun to do. No, are you kidding me? I'm not going to go fishing. No, he would not do that. The whales. Do you guys understand the whales need fish around here? Although you know, I can't Brian, go fishing. I would, I would love to go fishing with you. I would love to go fishing with with you. What's he gonna throw seen, me off the boat? That's a horrible. You ever thing seen to The say. Godfather? You ever seen The Godfather? You're a horrible person. But you know what? Thank God we got a weekend off. Well, you do. I don't. I'll be working all weekend, everybody. The wrestling news don't stop, buddy. That's true. It doesn't stop. But we'll talk to you next time, everyone. Wrestling Observer Live.